Whoop. Hello everybody and welcome back. I thought this would be a great time to have a look at the Elegoo Mars 3D printer and have a look at what it is, what it does and how much it costs because right now this is one of the greatest offers around. The Elegoo Mars is one of the new type of photo curing 3D printers that basically has a curing surface where ultraviolet light shines onto a resin and all the points where the resin and the light meet the resin cures and becomes hard. This technology allows for much higher resolution 3D prints than we get with FDM printer. For example, the XY resolution of this 3D printer is 0.047 millimeters. Um, the z-axis accuracy is 0.0125 millimeters and the characteristical layer thickness that you can achieve can be between 0.01 and 0.2 millimeters. This is a lot and this is so much finer than we've ever had before and at the price of around 250 euros right now this is just a really, really great deal. Ultraviolet curing resins and ultraviolet curing epoxy has been around for quite a while. In fact, dentists have been using it for longer than 30 years now. But where does the UV come from? Well, there is a pretty huge UV light in the bottom of the 3D printer shining upwards. Um, on the top of the printer, there is a display as known for a uh, LCD display in mobile phones and the UV light is led through the display and shines onto this tray and in the middle of the tray there's actually a very thin foil and this acts as a membrane and the UV curing resin sticks to that membrane. So let's have a look at what comes with the 3D printer and what's in the box. First of all, the 3D printer itself, then the UV shroud, the red container. Uh, it goes over the 3D printer when it's in use and, it's what, and when it's not in use, uh, just to make sure that no UV light can get in and that none of the UV radiation can get out. There is the build platform, which is attached to the Z-axis arm. We also get a power cord, a resin container, a scraper, a USB disc with the drivers, the slicer and more on it, a set of gloves, which are really important because UV curing resin is not um, safe for use on bare skin. A pair of snips, some filters to filter the resin when you put it back into the reservoir, some Allen wrenches and tools, a 60 watt power supply, an Allen screwdriver, a tool for getting uh, resin off the print bed, and finally three face masks because UV resin does smell bad and it is also bad for your lungs and it should not be inhaled. The printer also comes with a very simple manual uh, for the first setup. Uh, this is really easy to read, really simple, but it suffices. Also to print you need some photosensitive resin and some isopropylene alcohol or methylated spirits will also work but they will make your prints look matte and uh, you might not always want that. Also it smells pretty bad. To level the print platform we first take the build platform off and open these two screws. I've already done that. Um, 
now the build platform is loose and we can see that this here is spring loaded and we then turn on the printer and when it's turned on we go to the tools menu go to manual movement set 10 millimeters and move the build platform up until we can put the build platform on it push it all the way on and we tighten it and once we've done that we press the home or go to zero button this will move the build platform all the way down and all we need to do is make sure that this gets a good move on it so now it's homed we can see that the surfaces are parallel and perpendicular hold this and tighten the screws this is really really simple now the build platform is absolutely perpendicular and parallel to the area that does the exposing and we can be sure that it is absolutely at zero height ta-da! the printer is set up and basically ready to go now what we can do is we can move it up about 5 to 10 centimeters the manual says 10 centimeters and and then we can go back into the menu do an exposure test that's a bit long let's say about three seconds so we're setting it to three seconds then we go for next and it should turn on the light for just three seconds and looking at it we can see that there was actually an exposure going on now we know it works and we can move on preparing resin and the printer itself and uh, some solvent and we can do a test print i'm now going to fill the tray up about one third for the test print there's a test print on the uh, usb disk that comes with the printer and we're just going to test that out So that is it. I can already smell it. Um, this stuff smells really strongly um, and I don't like the smell at all but I have the fume extractor running it won't be so bad for me. Um, I'm also wearing gloves. This is really important. Um, always wear gloves when working with this stuff. Now, I do have a lot of blue light here, so I don't want to have this open for too long. No, I don't want this to start curing. Let's add the disc. Go to print. Select the folder with the demo print. And we have 
the ccdlp file which is um, the rook when it's printed and I'm going to select that and I'm going to select play for print So you can actually now see it doing layer for layer for layer. And uh, on the display you can see the image it is exposing right now, or photo curing. And uh, it predicts that printing this will take 2 hours and 35 minutes. And uh, it is now on layer 2 of 1000. So for each and every layer that it does, it exposes, then it pulls up the print head, uh, the print bed, moves it back down and exposes the next layer. Really nice. As you can now see, I've just removed the cover uh, to show this. It is working a lot faster af after it's done the bottom layers which need to stick to the build platform really well and it's accelerated quite a bit now and you can see for every layer that it starts it actually pulls up once and goes back down again um, leaving another gap and making sure that there is uh, resin between the build platform and um, the exposing plane and it's really picking up speed now. This is quite nice. I just have to keep this covered because I think that my studio light has a very high UV uh, rate and this is the software working its way. So I'll let this run and come back in uh, two hours or so. So it's now actually two hours and uh, 41 minutes later and the print has completed and I'm going to uh, start removing everything from the print platform now but I'll have to turn off the camera because I don't have enough light. Um, I will be putting it first into some uh, um, alcohol to get it cleaned and I have a second uh, bowl of alcohol where it will rest for a couple of minutes so it can just rinse. So there's one for coarse cleaning, one for fine cleaning. And after that, uh, I'll turn the camera back on. But that might be tomorrow, but I just wanted to show that it is done. Uh, it looks kind of cool. Here are the first three prints that I made. And I must say they're pretty good. I like the quality. Um, this one has a fault. Uh, it came off the print bed and it deformed, so it really looks warped the way we have it on FDM uh, prints. It's quite weird. I don't know why this happened. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try different setups um, with support, without support, um, having it flat on the print bed, having it tilted with a lot of support, things like that. Um, but that is just going to take some time. Um, I have the sample rooks that come with the printer and these came out very well. I am really impressed by the quality of that. This is just amazing. You can see how high the resolution is and how good the surface looks. Um, there's a staircase inside and also a spinning helix um, winds its way all the way from the bottom to the top in the center of the rook. And I found out that I had some oozing going on at the edges here, um, but this didn't happen until I put it into my makeshift curing chamber. 
uh, which is basically just a bucket full of um, ultraviolet LEDs, but it does have about 24 watts of uh, LED power, so it is quite um, powerful. What's also nice is um, there's writing in here and you can just read it very well. I'm absolutely delighted by the quality. And uh, this is basically the, as far as I've gotten right now. I will be making some more videos, I suppose. Um, but for a first look at this printer, this is just amazing. Um, it is a really nice package. I really enjoy working with it because it's so simple. And um, apart from the smell, which is uh, really obnoxious, now this is a very nice system and make sure to always wear a mask and gloves because uh, this is epoxy and epoxy is not really healthy so this is no printer for a kid's bedroom or for the living room or kitchen this is a basement printer but for that and for the amazing price of about 250 euros right now this just can't be beat it's the best that I've seen in a long time and I'm sure that I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this one. The software included with the 3D printer is in my case Chi2Box version 1.4.0. Um, that isn't a bad choice. Uh, it's basically the standard Swiss Army knife uh, tool set. Uh, you can have raft supports, uh, you can resize, scale, turn, mirror your objects. Um, it can do everything that you need and um, this is not dongled in any way but I did see that if you want to download version 1.5.0 you have to register at a uh, Chinese website. Um, which is something that I find, um, well, they wouldn't have to do that. Um, I see that they want all the available contact information of their customers, but um, for a software such as a printer like this, this wouldn't have been necessary, and maybe they'll rethink that. Um, yeah, the software is okay. It's not great. But it really is okay. I like it. It works out fine. And uh, you can export all these settings and edit them yourself and re-import them. Or you can use um, the tools and the setup that comes with the, uh, with the software to set up your printer the way you will like it. And uh, basically everything is included. Um, I didn't find any example prints but uh, I suppose that is okay. Uh, Thingiverse is available to everybody and you can just try out stuff that you can get yourself. Um, yeah, there's not much to the software. It is uh, the bare minimum, but it's the bare minimum that works out. Uh, printer settings are available through the settings tab. They are pretty simple. Uh, you can configure multiple printers, which I find nice. And uh, once you click the add printer uh, icon, you get a menu where you can find the Elegoo Mars. And that is it, what you need to do for the basic setup. And as I said, it's not exceptionally good, but it gets the job done and it feels quite up to the task. This concludes the short review of the Elegoo Mars photo curing 3D printer. It's a really great package. I like it a lot. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this, I promise. And uh, I'll keep learning about it and you will probably be seeing it in some of my future projects. Thank you very much for watching and bye bye.